into it as soon as possible because we have already lost five to seven minutes. Uh, so a little uh, bit introduction about myself. I am Hari Krishna Varma, uh, working with uh, uh, Pitney Bowes uh, software in uh, Agile NCR region uh, as a manager product development uh, and Agile coach. Uh, I have few certifications in, in Agile area and also uh, in industry as a speaker on Agile. Uh, I have my website, uh, knowledgeblog.com. Uh, recently started covering, uh, you know, uh, areas around management leadership, agile, and technology. Uh, we may expand, but yeah, it depends how it goes and uh, uh, where my interest lies. So, <clears throat> then uh, today's topic is uh, uh, thinking beyond uh, breaking the silos or getting out of silos. Uh, my dear friend, uh, recently we talked about his agile uh, journey, like in a non-agile uh, organization, how we start agile. So that was a vast topic, but this one is very, very specific where we are talking about like, okay, during that journey or the way agile uh, organization structures are, how those silos get created, are they good, bad, do we know what they are and can we get out of them? Uh, how, how many, if I ask a question, like how many developers are here? There are few, okay. QA members, quality assurance, okay. Architects, no, okay, there yeah. are. Um, managers, UI, okay, that's good, good. Quite a number in management. So let's uh, uh, begin. What comes to your mind when you look at this picture? I don't know these colors are... Can we switch off lights? Hardly visible. Uh, can we do that? Better. Can you have someone switch off lights? We'll start into it as soon as possible because we have already lost five to seven minutes. Uh, so a little uh, bit introduction about myself. I am Hari Krishna Varma. Uh, working with uh, uh, Pitney Bowes uh, software in uh, Agile NCR region uh, as a manager product development uh, and Agile coach. Uh, I have few certifications in, in Agile area and also uh, in industry as a speaker on Agile. Uh, I have my website, uh, knowledgeblog.com. Uh, recently started covering, uh, you know, uh, areas around management leadership, Agile, and technology, uh, we may expand, but yeah, it depends how it goes and uh, uh, where my interest lies. So, <clears throat> then uh, today's topic is uh, uh, thinking beyond uh, breaking the silos or getting out of silos. Uh, my dear friend, uh, recently we talked about his agile uh, journey, like in a non-agile uh, organization, how we start agile. So that was a vast topic. But this one is very, very specific where we are talking about like, okay, during that journey or the way agile uh, organization structures are, how those silos get created, are they good, bad, do we know what they are and can we get out of them? Uh, how, how many, if I ask a question, like how many developers are here? There are few, okay. QA members, quality assurance, okay, architects, no, okay, there yeah. are, um, managers, UI, okay, that's good, good, quite a number in management. So let's uh, uh, begin. What comes to your mind when you look at this picture? I don't know these colors are. Can we switch off lights? Hardly visible. Uh, can you do that? Better. Can you have someone switch up lights? Spike and uh, what? What else do you think? Like, if you get a picture, what? What? Any artistic side and what to uh, go and tell? Oh, crown maybe. Okay. Okay. Yes, it's crown. Yeah, it seems somewhere. Anything else? Start with a part of sun. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Right, and 
if I change a little bit, right? Yes, so crown was related, some spikes were related, and definitely some, uh, definitely, we have assumptions, each role is, each, you know, personality have a different perspective about something, and that's what we are going to talk. Uh, I have taken this picture from uh, Iswen Benyai, a uh, member who, like, is from uh, Holland, uh, but then uh, shifted to US and uh, wrote his first book, Zoom, for kids without a single word. It's all pictures. And that's what, like, few pictures we have taken to set the context and then we will move forward. So now we have uh, chicken, right? Uh, what what else we can think like how does that look now some colors are appearing <coughs> any thoughts if I say that it's sitting on a rooftop and few kids are watching it right if you go further it is a colony where Many houses are there, people are there interacting, a lot of many things are happening and it, it's a bigger perspective. One more time. What's happening now? What, what do you see and uh, interpret it? It's just part of a picture where some live thing is happening, somebody's losing or just like near a, a maybe a swimming pool. Right? It's on a deck. And the deck is now <laughs> on a bus. It's all the time it's just moving. Guys, just watching a TV. <laughs> Can we relate these with our uh, software development uh, industry or the way we work day to day activities? Can we relate somewhere? Like, if you want to share, like, how and where we can relate it? Something customer is you know, taking something else and we are taking our own process. Yes. Sometimes if we are not aware of the broader picture, we may have our own assumptions and then we are carrying forward with that direction. Bang on. Yes. Setting up goals once we get to this step, we take it. Yes. Yes. And that might be possible with uh, having a start of a kick of making, uh, involving all stakeholders, product owners, or even Yes, so talking like, okay, we need to get together somewhere, we need to talk, everybody may have a different perspective about something, and that's, that's right, like in management or leadership or any organization, we call that, okay, 30,000 feet view, then 10,000 feet view, 1,000 feet, 100 feet, and they're on the floor, ground running. This is all about it. <coughs> in software development, as you mentioned, we have our boundaries. We have the way our organizations are structured, the metrics of organizations. We say like, okay, we should have a skill in a department, a function. And that's where we have few engineers. Mostly focus is like, okay, I just want to know what are requirements. Uh, I want to write some test cases. And then once it's ready, let me know. I will just test them one by one. And I am 100% then. And then definitely I will also check two more cases which we I have not written and that's stretching my limit. Right? Double the word. I, I know the best coding and I know how to implement it. What it is, you just tell me the requirement, I will implement it and it will be ready by 
day after tomorrow. Don't come to me. Let me focus on my work. Architect, thinking like, okay, system should be scalable. We want to write the best code right at first time. And there should not be performance issues and all those jargons he or she may have just shears there. Managers, most of us like have a different perspective. We want like, okay, can you guys work together? Can you talk more? We have that challenge, but yes, we always focus on only that aspect without you know going other deeper aspect of it, and we'll uh, see them what those are and how we can interaction designer. Yeah, close to users, interact with users, and <coughs> talk about okay, what. If, if I map the interaction, how that is going to help user, what are their persona, and just limiting that boundaries. Not thinking about the challenges of technical implementation or quality <coughs> assurance, or is there a connection between team or not. They say like, we don't want to be part of scrum teams, because we want to be ahead. And, and if I am part of Sprint, then how can I make connection and what how can I what kind of PBIs I will be working? Because they are just thinking that mindset, okay, PBIs has to be there in sprints. DBAs, they have their perspective. Uh, product owners, interesting guy, interesting role, uh, but then suddenly comes like, okay, where we are, we are not hitting our releases. And customer is, we know for sure this feature is being used by or will be potentially used by five customers. And once released, even we don't know if those five are there or not. But just focusing on that aspect. Similarly, configuration manager, DevOps, and uh, all those uh, aspects. Scrum master, our guy, just focusing that yes. Uh, how are we doing on our burn down charts? Uh, are we, you know, uh, taking that corrective action today? It's going deep down. Why? What did we do uh, suddenly that, yeah, it's looking very good? And the next day, conversation changes. But having different backgrounds, experiences, expertise may introduce, introduce different perspectives. It's up to us that each of that perspective is right, wrong, and there is no right and wrong. Each one is a perspective, fact. And it's up to us how we use that, bring those perspectives together to solve the client issue, to solve or, or reach out to the, the end user with a solution which helps them. Silo. I, I think we covered that aspect, but what it is in a practical definition, we say like, yeah, it's a limited boundary perspective. Each role, each function, each skill set, or as an individual, I have my perspective and I just want to be in that. That is silo. Uh, I think earlier talk, he <coughs> mentioned about that creating wall. If people of one function is in a location, maybe Bangalore, and another function in uh, uh, Gurgaon, or maybe within organization, one function is sitting maybe Tower A, another one Tower B. It's creating walls. Organizations, structures are placed to create specialization. Yes, they are there. They have a cohesive element, and they used to work very well uh, because information flow was limited and it was coming via a channel. But today's world, the modern time, it has changed. Doesn't quite well effectively <coughs> work in today's fast-paced environment where information and consumer are there and everybody can have access to any thought process or perspective which is running in the industry. <coughs> what are the answers? What do you see that, okay, what should happen to break those silos? Have you
you experienced something in the, or your, your organization or in your team that mm -hmm. yes, I have done this much or this work? Can you share? It is related to behavior of a person also, uh, acceptance of the, uh, the new change and, uh, and, uh, and uh, maybe satisfaction <coughs> level of one person. I have done this, now I have to do that, I don't want to do it like that. So. Right. Behavior aspect is there. And I think second element could be building the communities. Mm -hmm. Communities could be, for example, like developer communities. People who are sharing knowledge, using discussion forums, having lunch and learn sessions, so building a QA community, developer community, business analyst community, basically creating a kind of culture of sharing information and collaboration. That helps to some extent in breaking the cycle. Otherwise, you are right. If, unless there is a specific collaboration effort, yeah. that is going to create silos and it's not going to be optimal. True. And one aspect, as you mentioned, like having community of practices is a right thing to do. We are not saying that it should not happen. But at the same time, one community should also appreciate what other community is doing. What are they for? Because in the big picture, where all of us are, we are finally going to develop a piece, a software or some service which is going to impact client, the end user. That picture should be there in front of all of us, wherever we are, wherever function, which function we are working upon. And if that is the connect, then I am sure that we will be able to drive many, many things, all the collaboration aspect, everything, tools and techniques, people, process aspects, to align in the same direction, meeting the Client or making delighting the client happy or delighting the client or user, right? And it is also taking the ownership. Spike and uh, what? What else do you think? Like, if you get a picture, what? What? Any artistic side and what to uh, go and tell? Crown, maybe. Okay. Okay. Yes, it's crown. Yeah, it seems somewhere. Anything else? It's not part of sun. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 yes. Right, and if I change a little bit. Right? Yes, so crown was related. Some spikes were related. And definitely, sun, definitely, we have assumptions. Each role, is, each, you know, personality have a different perspective about something. And that's what we are going to talk about. Uh, I have taken this picture from uh, Iswen Benyai, a uh, member who like is from uh, Holland, uh, but then uh, shifted to US and uh, wrote his first book, Zoom, for kids without a single word. It's all pictures. And that's what like few pictures we have taken to set the context and then we will move forward. So now we have uh, chicken, right? Uh, what what else we can think like how does that look now some colors are appearing <coughs> any thoughts if I say that it's sitting on a rooftop and few kids are watching it right if you go further it is a colony where Many houses are there, people are there interacting, a lot of many things are happening and it, it's a bigger perspective. One more time. What's happening now? What, what do you see and uh, interpret it? It's just part of a picture where some live thing is happening, somebody is losing or just like near a, a maybe a swimming pool. Right? It's on a deck. And the deck is now <laughs> on a bus. It's all the time it's just moving. Guys, just 
watching a TV. <laughs> Can we relate these with our uh, software development uh, industry or the way we work day to day activities? Can we relate somewhere? Like, if you want to share, like, how and where we can relate it? Just focusing that yes, 
uh, how are we doing on our burn down charts? Uh, are we, you know, uh, taking that corrective action today? It's going deep down. Why? What did we do uh, suddenly that, yeah, it's looking very good. And the next day, conversation changes. But having different backgrounds, experiences, expertise may introduce, introduce different perspectives. It's up to us that each of that perspective is right, wrong, and there is no right and wrong. Each one is a perspective, fact. And it's up to us how we use that, bring those perspectives together to solve the client issue, to solve or, or reach out to the, the end user with a solution which helps them. Silo. I, I think we covered that aspect, but what it is in a practical definition, we say like, yeah, it's a limited boundary perspective. Each role, each function, each skill set, or as an individual, I have my perspective and I just want to be in that. That is silo. Uh, I think earlier talk, he <coughs> mentioned about that creating wall. If people of one function is in a location, maybe Bangalore, and another function in uh, uh, Gurgaon, or maybe within organization, one function is sitting maybe Tower A, another one Tower B. It's creating walls. Organizations, structures are placed to create specialization. Yes, they are there. They have a cohesive element, and they used to work very well uh, because information flow was limited and it was coming via a channel. But today's world, the modern time, it has changed. Doesn't quite well effectively <laughs> work in today's fast-paced environment where information and consumer are there and everybody can have access to any thought process or perspective which is running in the industry. <clears throat> what are the answers? What do you see that, okay, what should happen to break those silos? Have you experienced something in the, or your, your organization or in your team that mm -hmm. yes, I have done this much or this work? Can you share a couple of It is related to behavior of a person also, uh, acceptance of the, uh, the new change and, uh, and, uh, and uh, maybe satisfaction <coughs> level of one person. I have done this, now I have to do that. I don't want to do it like that. So. Right. Behavior aspect is there. And I think second element could be building communities. Mm -hmm. Communities could be, for example, like developer communities. People who are sharing knowledge, using discussion forums, having lunch and lunch sessions, so building a QA community, developer community, business analyst community. Basically creating a kind of culture of sharing information and collaboration. That helps to some extent in breaking the time. Otherwise you are right. If unless there is a specific collaboration effort, yeah. it is going to create silos and it's not going to be optimal. True. And one aspect as you mentioned like having community of practices is a right thing to do. <coughs> we are not saying that it should not happen. But at the same time one community should also appreciate what other community is doing. What are they for? Because in the big picture, where all of us are, we are finally going to develop a piece, a software or some service which is going to impact client, the end user. That picture should be there in front of all of us, wherever we are, wherever function, which function we are working upon. And if that is the connect, then I am sure that we will be able to drive many, many things, all the collaboration aspect, everything, tools and techniques, people, process aspects, to align in the same direction, meeting the client, or making, delighting the client, hack, or delighting the client or user. Right? And it is also taking the ownership. Spike and, uh, what, what else? Do you think like if you get a picture, what, what any artistic side and what to, 
go back and tell you about it. Crown, maybe. Okay, okay, yes, it's crown, yeah, it, it seems somewhere. Anything else? It's part, part, of, part of sun, we used to make in uh, childhood days. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 yes. Right, and if I change a little bit, right? Yes, so crown was related, some spikes were related, and definitely sun, definitely, we have assumptions. Each role, is, each, you know, personality have a different perspective about something, and that's what we are going to talk. Uh, I have taken this picture from uh, Iswen Benyai, a uh, member who, like, is from uh, Holland. Uh, but then uh, shifted to US and uh, wrote his first book, Zoom, for kids without a single word. It's all pictures. And that's what, like, few pictures we have taken to set the context and then we will move forward. So now we have uh, chicken, right? Uh, what, what else we can think, like, how does that look now? Some colors are appearing. <coughs> Any thoughts? If I say that it's sitting on a rooftop and few kids are watching it, right? If you go further, it is a colony where many houses are there, people are there interacting, a lot of many things are happening and it's a bigger perspective. One more time. What's happening now? What What do you see and uh, interpret it? It's just part of a picture where some live thing is happening. Somebody's losing or just like near a. Uh, maybe a swimming pool, right? It's on a deck, and the deck is now <laughs> on a bus. It's all the time, it's just moving. I mean, the guy is just watching a TV. Can we relate these with our uh, software development uh, industry or the way we work day to day activities? Can we relate somewhere? Like, if you want to share, like, how and where we can relate it?
check two more cases which we I have not written and that's stretching my limit. Right? Developer. I, I know the best coding and I know how to implement it. What it is, you just tell me the requirement, I will implement it and it will be ready by day after tomorrow. Don't come to me, let me focus on my work. Architect, thinking like, okay, system should be scalable. We want to write the best code right at first time. And there should not be performance issues and all those jargons he or she may have just shears there. Managers, most of us like have a different perspective. We want like, okay, can you guys work together? Can you talk more? We have that challenge, but yes, we always focus on only that aspect without, you know, going other deeper aspect of it and we'll uh, see them what those are and how we can. Interaction designer. Yeah, close to users, interact with users and <coughs> talk about, okay, what, if, if I map the interaction, how that is going to help user what are their persona, and just limiting that boundaries. Not thinking about the challenges of technical implementation or quality <coughs> assurance, or is there a connection between team or not. They say like, we don't want to be part of scrum teams, because we want to be ahead. And, and if I am part of sprint, then how can I make connection and what, how can I, what kind of, PBIs I will be working because they are just thinking that mindset, okay, PBIs has to be there in sprints. DBAs, they have their perspective. Uh, product owners, interesting guy, interesting role, uh, but then suddenly comes like, okay, where we are? We are not hitting our releases and customer is, we know for sure this feature is being used by or will be potentially used by five customers. And once released, even we don't know if those five are there or not. But just focusing on that aspect. Similarly, configuration manager, DevOps, and uh, all those uh, aspects. Scrum master, our guy, just focusing that, yes, uh, how are we doing on our burn down charts? Uh, are we, you know, uh, taking that corrective action today, it's going deep down. Why? What did we do uh, suddenly that, yeah, it's looking very good. And the next day, conversation changes. But having different backgrounds, experiences, expertise may introduce, introduce different perspective. It's up to us that each of that perspective is right, wrong, and there is no right and wrong. Each one is a perspective, fact. And it's up to us how we use that, bring those perspectives together to solve the client issue, to solve or, or reach out to the, the end user with a solution which helps them. Silo. I, I think we covered that aspect, but what it is in a practical definition, we say like, yeah, it's a limited boundary perspective. Each role, each function, each skill set, or as an individual, I have my perspective and I just want to be in that. That is silo. Uh, I think earlier talk, he <coughs> mentioned about that creating wall. If people of one function is in a location, maybe Bangalore, and another function in uh, uh, Gurgaon, or maybe within organization, one function is sitting, maybe tower A, another one tower B. It's creating walls. Organizations, structures are placed to create specialization. Yes, they are there. They have a cohesive element and they used to work very well uh, because information flow was limited and it was coming via a channel. But today's world, the modern time, it has changed. Doesn't quite well effectively <laughs> work in today's fast-paced environment where information and consumer are there and everybody can have access to any thought process.
process or perspective which is running in the industry? <coughs> what are the answers? What do you see that, okay, what should happen to break those silos? Have you experienced something in the, or your, your organization or in your team that mm -hmm. yes, I have done this much or this work? Can you share? It is related to behavior of a person also, uh, acceptance of the, uh, the new change and, uh, and, uh, and uh, maybe satisfaction <coughs> level of one person. I have done this, now I have to do that, I don't want to do like that. So. Right, behavior aspect is there. And
get to know each other, each other's perspective, their skill set, where that fit in the big picture. Because both of things are very, very important. We should know what are those users or what are those pain areas which we are going to address as a team. And then also understand each other that how we all can work together to solve, uh, bring the solution for the end user. Collaborative work culture, as you mentioned. Decision making should be coordinated across silos. It, it should not happen that, okay, some decision is taken. It's okay that decision is taken, but then the communication, radiation should happen in such a way that it is communicated everywhere. Everybody is on the same page and we can move forward with that. Okay. Have a single sort of truth. In, in Agile Scrum, we have our Jira or TFS or version one. Single source of truth for anything. If any decision, any comment, anything is taken, it is there. I can just go and have a look at it, what happened. Our Jira with Confluence and many other tools, Green Hoppers, it, it provides the ecosystem where we can collaborate well and you know make a difference to our client. Establish common platforms and system across the organization. Same data and information is available, radiated to one and all. Socialized learning. You know, it, it's a big change and it is very rare where we see that, okay, we acknowledge if something has happened right in some way. We don't appreciate, we just say like, okay, let's move in, we just focus on client deliveries and everything. But ecosystem where right things are appreciated and acknowledged creates that, you know, rhythm or accelerating effect in creating a culture which can, you know, drive success to our business and our clients' business. So two aspects. One, when I mentioned this, this is maybe a broader because we were talking about organization level. So when we said like, okay, we try to, we are running a pilot in this uh, particular team, a product team, and uh, we are trying out these four or five different elements and just seeing like, okay, whether that works or not. If that works, sharing that a big billboard story and sharing across the organization. That yes, this is what the problem areas were. We tried to address with these. These three things were bang on. These two may be or may not be, but we need to refine it. One is that and socialize it, make it viable. Another aspect which uh, uh, you mentioned that how we can then acknowledge or appreciate and a team, because if team has done, we can say like team has done. But that is where, you know, that communication, setting expectation, and having that interaction that within team also, there are if pockets of, you know, excellence, we should be able to appreciate. And even we have seen in our team and where, like, uh, I coach many teams, so even teams within say that, okay, this sprint or I think for last two sprint, he is the guy who took us forward. We were at an impediment, didn't know what to go and where to go from here. But yes, he worked on it, she worked on it, and she has brought a solution which we never could have thought of. Because there are those stories. It's not that it is, he or they are not part of the team, but one individual item which has created difference for us should be acknowledged. So we need to do that. When we talk about how are we doing this time, right? 
think we are thinking, we, we talked about two aspects. One is the big picture and one is the internal aspect. So big picture, user-centric approach, the client-centric environment, that, which connects all of us together. So <coughs> why, who, where, what, when, then, many, many questions, all WH questions, whatever you comes to your mind, should be thought about why we are doing something. Why is it needed? Whom are we going to serve? Are they interested in this? Is it real need in the market? Because we have rarely seen that a simple developer or fresh graduate, a part of team asking such questions. But we need to create a culture where definitely they ask it. Because this is what is going to uh, you know, answer all the questions and then he is going to make the right decision for something. Because it, th th there are challenges. We don't get the client perspective in right. Ask these questions. Why are we grouped together? What is the purpose? Do we know why we are doing this project? Because sometimes even we don't think about it. Because manager has asked, we are together, we need to develop something. Just work on it. Who are we going to serve? Who is the real client? The user. Is it like in the services we may say that okay, I'm just uh, working for maybe GE or uh, Barclay uh, and we are just solving this uh, puzzle for them. So we know it's one client. But then you should have perspective that we are not <coughs> talking about that Barclay, the big name. Within that, which is the function we are going to serve? Which application, this application is going to serve finance or manufacturing? Department, if manufacturing, then what are those users? Why they are going to use it? How this is going to solve their business problem? What is the real need? Where is, because sometimes like, where is it going to be used plays a key role. We recently, you know, <coughs> developed the capability in the product where Four investigators, uh, we, we, we are a product uh, development company and I own a product which is infrastructure asset management product for uh, highways, uh, managing the highways, street lights, uh, parks, trees, benches, all of these public assets. Uh, and one of our user personalized investigators who are on the field and they look at, okay, is there a problem somewhere? And if it is, then raising those defects. So we developed a, a mobile uh, <coughs> app for that. Initially, six, seven years back, it was just Windows based. We realized that Windows users are shrink. Like three, four years back, it was like just 9% of total user base is uh, Windows. And also we observed that now they are using iPad or bigger screens, and not only just mobile. So how do you design your application depends like in which environment they are going to use. They are on the field where they need uh, offline connection, uh, connectivity or online connectivity and then we say okay if most of users are iPad and some big screen uh, mobile then okay can we do our use, uh, designing such a way that it's very responsive. That helps making your right decision for your clients. That perspective. When it's needed, okay, we talked about this. <coughs> All said and done, we need to have that mindset that, okay, if we plan, it is not that we are going to execute this plan which we agreed upon. Allow mid, -correct, mid course corrections. Because after two sprints, there might be some different scenario that we got to know some other constraint which are uh, which is in, in, in the field and we need to respond to that situation. As we do, take corrective action and it's we don't want to hit this because the market has changed, the need has changed, it is where we wanted to go. You know, we plan to go here, but actually we wanted to go somewhere else and we took that real part to be there. Right? Okay, so now what do you see?
see in this picture there. Stairs, design, okay, design stairs. Uniform pattern. Uniform pattern, okay. Think about the complexity. Bus, <laughs> think about the complexity of making this happen. Execution. If all those maybe 10 members or 15 members are going to build it and they don't understand each step, this cannot happen without appreciating the big picture, our end goal, and also without aligning with what we all can do together. I say individual steps, those are blind, makes stairs, which is useful and wonderful. It gives a great, great experience. One is like having just simple staircase, but here in this surrounding you can be at calm, think aloud, many, many things, and many ideas may come. It's a delightful experience you are going to have in this. If I convert our same statement in our maybe agile or uh, scrum thing, individuals, independent executable steps for our tasks, which are aligned, tied to a big story. Right? It's a big story, which is stairs, real main client need, useful because they are going to upstairs and they are going to get the value, but also delight. Wonderful, client delight. Right? I'll end it here. Uh, I talked about uh, <coughs> references, just one many eye. Uh, we can take out three questions. I, I, we have still five minutes, I think. Right? Three to five minutes here. Oh. Yes, please. When can uh, appreciation become destructive for a team? When can appreciation become destructive for the team? I think it's probably. So, if if it is not a real appreciation, if it is not a right example to be appreciated, and if it is done over and over again, it might be possible that sometimes you were not able to make the right decision, which is okay. Team or culture or anybody say that okay, it's okay. But if we do it consistently, if we have biases towards few members or some activities, then those become destructive uh, in, in, in work culture. Okay. Uh, sir, if you have to summarize your entire message in two to three points, what do you think? I'll say one thing like two uh, things which we talked about like think beyond and break the silos, right? Think beyond is having that big picture in mind why we are doing something, who we are doing it for, how the work we do help the uh, end user. Having that big picture and then another one is breaking silos. We all collectively need everybody's skill, everybody's engagement to deliver the effective solution to our client. And that's where we need to talk more, we need to interact more and that's only going to help us.
then definitely we don't want to say that okay this person scrum master is the only member who is responsible for setting the meetings or qa is the only member who is going to test or write scenarios all the scenarios for the uh, work so there and if we say like okay engineering manager need to identify whether those silos are in place then it's not only that role i mean to say we need to inculcate that work culture that what are those right things which are needed one need is identifying the silos it can be individual member who can uh, you know bring that across as an impediment that i observe these couple of members are you know if their function is maybe qa and they say like no j just focus on what is written in a story and convert those story into 10 test scenarios but don't think beyond that okay what and why user and where what user is going to use this and those scenarios are not coming up now the confrontation must be can be that okay where do that member raise this issue because if i am part of team and if i raise bluntly here in a forum that okay these guys are useless it is a it's a problem but then we need to have a culture where i can interact one to one with this member and say that okay i observe that this is my feeling or my observation and due to this we lack effective development do you agree or appreciate or why do you don't do this we may sort it out together he may say oh i never for a while and can appreciate what i am saying and we solve sometimes if i try it once twice and doesn't pay attention then maybe i need to work with scrum master and work say that i observe this because retrospective is one piece there where you can raise these things if you have open culture but if you don't have open culture then you need to do that we are scrum master or we are a project manager so there are various tracks we can do but definitely if it is a real self organized team where open work culture is there we will be sorted out like with the lesser difficulties yes what organizational factors uh, encourage creation of silos actually <coughs> you know as we talk one is like that matrix organization structure if if suppose qa function is reporting to one uh, uh, maybe department head and our architects are reporting somewhere else and then they may tend to create such we may have an argument that in scrum or agile we say all cross functional team members are part of one group so we are reducing that yes of course we are reducing that but if those hierarchies are there they play a role and even if those are not there then it comes to our individual aspect because organization is supporting but as an individual also i can you know switch off my work uh, you know thinking like okay i need to work with this guy i just want to focus on what i'm given work so both ways and we need to solve that thank you thank you right thank you thank you very much everyone thank you thank you for wonderful talk